Welcome to part 3 of Liquid's introduction, let's add some forces to our simulation. When you play the scene, you can see that the particles already gone downwards, which means that we have some sort of force in the simulation. Let's dive inside Autodop Network to see what forces we have here. So as we already mentioned in previous tutorials, uh, we have a gravity node which controls our gravity field gravity force, and we can adjust it by controlling these three values over here. Okay, but what if we want to add different forces? Let's go to the tab menu and then let's have a look at forces. So you can see that we have a lot of different types of forces here. For example, gravity, which we can use for our particle simulation and for our liquid simulation. But we also have pops. So because our liquid is also made out of particles, we can apply uh, the particle forces to it as well. So pop forces such as pop wind or pop velocity. So for a start, let's create a pop velocity. So now the question is, where do we plug it in? And when you zoom in to pop velocity node, you can see that the input and the output are purple. And the other node that has purple uh, inputs or outputs is our flip solver. So this is one way of remembering where to plug it in. Or you can go to the side effects guide. And in the side effects guide, you can see first the, uh, the description of the node. So a pop velocity is a pop node that directly changes the velocity of particles. So it applies some velocity to particles. And then when you scroll down, you also have the description of inputs and outputs. So in output is the one that interests us. So the final wiring should go into one of the purple inputs of a full solver, such as pop solver or flip solver. So this is one of those. And when you hover over here, you can see that the first one is particle velocity, the second one is volume velocity. For now it doesn't really matter which one we plug it into, uh, but if you want to know the difference you can again refer to the side effects guide and in here you'll find the description of the four inputs. So the first one is fluid to solve, so the simulation object to uh, evolve as a particle fluid. Then we have particle velocity, which uh, injects microsolvers after the particle velocity has been updated, but before it has been transferred to the volume field. So uh, just remember that this one is for the particles and the volume velocity is added afterwards and is added to the volume. So this one is to kind of the interior of the liquid and this one is to the whole volume of the liquid. So let's plug it into the first uh, purple input. Okay, and now play the simulation to see what's changed. And you can see it's quite slow, so I will just uh, decrease the quality of my simulation. Okay, so what happens now is that the gravity is not working, but also the particles are not going in any direction. They do not seem to have any velocity. Uh, so if you look at the settings, first of all, we have activation. So we can have activation of one, which means it's switched on, or activation of zero, which means it's switched off. So now we switched off the pop velocity. Okay, so now we can see that everything is working as before. So let's switch it on again and let's adjust these three values. So we have velocity in X, Y and Z axis. So let's say we want the particles go to go to the left. So I look at my uh, axis here. So it's negative Z. So I can type, for example, minus five. And now you will see that something is finally happening. OK, so the same as for the gravity node, we also have three values that we can adjust, which determine how much force uh, we apply or how high the velocity is. And we also have scale, which multiplies this value by these values. So if you want uh, all of these values to now be higher, uh, we can increase that scale value. So now instead of minus five, it will be minus 10. So minus five multiplied by two. OK, we also have other options here. We have, for example, the expressions, we have bindings, inputs, uh, but all of these things uh, are a bit more advanced. So for now, we can use velocity, scale and activation. All right, so let's add another node here. I want to add pop drag. So again, a pop force. And I want to plug it into the same uh, the same input, so I just replace it. Let's make some more space here so that we can see what's going on. And select pop, 
pop drug. And again, let's refer to the side effects guide to see what it does. So a pop drug is a pop note that applies drug to particles. And again, if you scroll down, go to the inputs and outputs, you can see that the final wiring should go into one of the purple inputs of a full solver. So very similar to our pop velocity. And it also has similar uh, parameters and things that we can change here. So first of all, activation, so either zero or one, switched on or off, uh, and then we have velocity and air resistance. So wind velocity is the speed at which we want the particles to be. So the particles will be dragged to move at the speed we uh, determine in these three values. Whereas air resistance is how fast this change happens. So if we increase this value, the particles will achieve the velocity uh, specified in these three values faster. Okay, so let's maybe use the same values. So minus five in Z axis. And now let's see what happens. So the only difference we can see is that we have wind velocity and we also have gravity. So we have two forces affecting our scene. All right, so at the moment the fluid doesn't look much like fluid because uh, it doesn't have much uh, noise happening there. There's no turbulence. So let's add something called pop wind. And again, we can plug it into the same input or what we can do is plug it in after pop drag. So what Houdini will do is execute it in the order from top to the bottom. First, we'll have pop drag and everything here applied and then we'll have pop wind. If you want to see what, what pop wind does without pop drag, you can keep it plugged in. Just click on bypass option. So the yellow, uh, yellow arrow. Okay. So now Houdini will just ignore this node and apply only what's happening in pop wind. So let's play it. And nothing is happening here. No change. Uh, it's just liquid and gravity. So to see what pop wind does, we need to adjust the settings. So again, we have activation, so we can switch it on or switch it off. We have wind velocity. So we can add again direction and air resistance. So you can see that it's very similar to what we have in pop drag. But then we also have other options here. So we have amplitude, swirl size, swirl scale, pulse length, roughness, attenuation, turbulence and offset. So let me explain what all of these things are. Let's imagine that the wind force is actually a curve, such as a sine wave. It has a certain shape that we can adjust and the streams of particles or our liquid will try to follow the curves. And similar like for waves, we also have a list of parameters. First, the wave can be divided into parts or cycles. In this example, the first cycle can be repeated to create the wave. Each cycle has its length and this length is simply called a wavelength. The height of the wave is called an amplitude. So if you imagine the wave is our liquid and the black line in the middle is the line that the liquid usually flows, the amplitude will be the biggest distance between the normal position and the displaced position. The next parameter that you'll hear quite often is frequency. This is the description of how many cycles the wave creates or travels in a time unit. So it can be three waves per second or 0.12 waves per frame. Houdini also uses several more parameters for the pop wind node, such as pulse length, uh, which for me is quite tricky. So please let me know in the comments if you know how to explain it better. Uh, the Houdini guide describes it as the duration of the lowest frequency in time, which in physics would be equivalent to the wave periods. So the inverse of frequency, meaning how much time it takes to complete one cycle. And the final parameter that can be described on a wave uh, is attenuation, which is simply the reduction of the effect, so a fade out of our wave over time. The remaining parameters in the pop wind node are swirl size, so the size of the noise pattern, swirl scale, which is the same as swirl size, but also allows us to control the noise in three axes separately, uh, then roughness, which is the scale of noise added with each iteration, and turbulence, so the number of iterations of fractal noise to add. At the end of this video, I've prepared a compilation of flipbooks presenting the same liquid simulation with different settings on the pop wind note. But now let's go back to Houdini and see how it works in practice. So we can now, for example, increase the amplitude, so the height of the wave, and you will see straight away that we have some noise applied to our particles. 
It will also make the particles look more organic and more realistic. So it's important to remember about pop wind force and you can even fake air fields using that one single note. If you want to visualize the forces, see how they look, let's go to flip object. Okay, select it, then we'll go to properties, uh, guides, and under visualize, you will see different types as we already mentioned. So we want to visualize velocity. And now when you play it, you will see all of these lines. And this is the visualization of the forces in our in our simulation. So now it's easier to adjust the settings in the pop wind force or any other force because you can just change the settings and then see how the vectors, how the forces change. So let's go back to the pop wind. So let's switch on our drag, uh, pop drag force now. And now you'll see that we have two forces, forces acting, three forces actually acting upon our liquid. So first we have pop drag, which moves the particles to the left. And then we have pop wind, which applies this, um, this noise to our uh, to our simulation. And then of course we have gravity, which also moves the, moves the particles downwards. If you want to see it more, you can go back to the wind force, maybe increase amplitude, and now you'll see much bigger noise happening here. So this is the introduction to liquid simulations. Thank you for watching and I hope it helped.